Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about how ecologists gather ecological data, what ecological data is, what are different ways in which ecologists can gather ecological data, and then what each type of data gathering technique is useful in what situations. So let's go. In order to gather ecological data, ecologists need to do one of three things. And the first thing is they have to make an observation. Observations are something that is identified with a sense, typically your eyes. It could be something you see, it could be something that you smell, it could be something that you hear, it could be something that you taste, it could be a variety of those altogether. But observations often lead to a question. That question leads to experimentation and experimentation often leads to modeling in order to depict what it is that you want to um, demonstrate. Some of those uh, observation questions or some of those research questions that come about as a result of observations could be, for example, which species lives here? If you're an ecologist and you're on an island or if you're in a particular environment and you notice that there are a variety of species there, you might ask the question, which species lives here? How many individuals of each species are there in a community? How big is the population in this particular area? What happens if a particular species is removed from a community? What is the impact of removing that particular species from this particular environment? Is it a keystone species? Is it a species that's gonna have incredible ramifications for the particular environment if you remove it from the community? How will organisms respond to climate change? How are they responding to climate change? What will happen if the climate changes? Okay, these are observation-based research questions that would lead to experimentation in a lab in order to go about trying to collect data to answer that question. Some experiments could be designed to test hypotheses by gathering data that support or reject those hypotheses. Some ecological experiments carefully monitor conditions in selected parts of natural environments, which is incredibly difficult to control variables. Um, if you are just making observations and collecting data in natural environments, you're going to not be able to successfully uh, control uh, humidity. You're not gonna be able to control temperature. You're not gonna be able to contrib uh, control drought conditions. You're not gonna be able to control invasive species very well. You're not going to be able to control fluctuations in pH. You're not really going to control any CO2 or O2 conditions or, or concentrations. Some ecologists know that it is difficult to control variables, and so they can also design artificial environments to control variables more carefully in order to test the association of organisms and those variables. Those would have to be closed off sealed chambers, sealed mesocosms, uh, as one example. When you are complete in terms of your data collection and your experimentation and you draw your conclusions, you can then switch to modeling, usually via computer okay, and uh, software programs, in order to try to depict or to predict what will happen long term over incredible amounts of large area uh, like our entire planet. And so when you talk about global change or modeling global change or modeling global warming that is a planet whole okay or a whole planet problem and so it's very hard in in fact impossible to control all of the conditions on the planet at the same time and so you have to turn to a model in order to try to depict what would happen long term models help ecologists understand natural phenomenon and so all of those things from observations to experimentation to modeling allows researchers and biologists, ecologists specifically, to formulate research questions, test and manipulate variables in order to control their experiments and then turn to modeling in order to depict large scale change uh, over the course of, of a lot of years. It helps us to predict what will happen in our environment and will help influence the ways that we try to uh, fix any potential ecological problems that may arise as the result of human impact. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. See ya.